All right, with this West 2 Facebook Live update, Bob Chief Meteorologist Tony Manolfi just wanted to bring you the uh, 8 o'clock intermediate advis advisory, the very latest uh, that I'm seeing tonight, um, and what could be uh, on the way for us uh, early next week. So we've got some timelines, we've got some new model tracks, we've got the new ensembles. Uh, and, and at about 9.30, we'll get an update on the tropical models, and we're hoping that with the hurricane hunters now uh, being down in there, that will uh, better serve us and give us uh, some more accurate readings on the future track and path uh, of our hurricane, which, by the way, uh, is still chugging along. So let me start with a look now uh, at the latest satellite presentation, and you can see the winds picking up now. Uh, up towards Plymouth, St. Thomas, St. Croix, even to the north side of Puerto Rico, which thankfully is going to miss uh, the worst of this storm. It'll go by to the south. You're still going to have some squally weather, though, uh, for sure. So that is a look at some of the satellite imagery. And I will answer questions, as I like to uh, say. Let me just drive through this, and then I'm going to field your questions, because uh, I know there's going to be a ton of them in here tonight. So that was the radar. We had an eye and it is quickly moving off towards the west northwest now the interesting thing for me is when you take a look at uh, this particular cone and then you take a look at the wind field notice where it is it's on the north or the east side of the storm that could come into play down the road as this storm is making the turn potentially over central florida on tuesday remember that on the eastern side uh, so even if the storm goes to the west of us, we stay, still may be dealing with uh, some sort of wind event here. So that's one of the things that we're are going to be uh, honing in on. Now, uh, hurricane hunters, as I've mentioned, have been in there, will be in there. Uh, they're just, that's a long flight, folks. Miami, down into there, these guys are going to be exhausted. Now, here's the one good thing. They made their first pass in that southwestern quadrant, and the pressures have actually come up. And on the intermediate advisory, I'll have you know that the pressure jumped from 991 up to 995. So that, for now, is, is at least a, uh, a good sign. Let's take a look now at the 8 o'clock intermediate advisory. Well, I'll tell you what, seeing a hurricane moving at 30 miles an hour, folks, that just does not happen uh, very often. But that's what we've got going on tonight. It should slow down, though. Now, once it gets past Hispaniola, the reason for that, it's breaking away from the Bermuda slash Azores high. And now on the current thinking, uh, Tuesday for Central Florida, if all goes as planned here, uh, then we could be dealing with our impacts here. Uh, Monday night down south, Tuesday morning on into Wednesday morning here in Central Florida as this thing will kind of uh, move on out fairly quickly. Now, we don't know how strong this storm is going to be. If it's weak, then we wouldn't have to worry about this. But if we have a strong tropical storm, I would say from 2 o'clock on, in that right front quadrant, uh, that's where you get your risk for tornadoes. And that would be with us uh, basically during the day on Tuesday. I've kind of drawn in uh, that front right quadrant. And you can see you get those feeder bands with that, with that icon there. So we'd have to watch that. But I just want to bring that to your attention. I'm not saying... This is going to happen. We, we clearly need to see what the impact is going to be with Cuba. Uh, I've got a graphic that I want to show you on that that I just kind of whipped up here that I think is actually fairly interesting. Uh, the big change today from this morning is the Hurricane Center is no longer weakening this storm until it hits Cuba. And the reason for that, the models are kind of honing in on paths and tracks in between Jamaica and Hispaniola and then making landfall sometime during the evening or very early Monday in Cuba. And depending upon exactly where it goes over Cuba, and that's important because I'm going to show you a graphic here in a second, uh, that will determine whether or not we have a tropical storm or something stronger. So there's still, for me, a lot of uncertainty uh, with what happens to this storm over Cuba. And I want to, I want to further expand on that. I've, I've kind of put this to graphic together tonight. Uh, oops, that's not the one I wanted. Give me one second. This is going to look goofy for one split second, uh, but I'm going to fix it right back up here for you. This is the Car I wanted the Caribbean mountains. This is a new graphic I've, I've kind of put together for tonight, and I hope it ah oh, stink. All right, I know what's going on. Give me one second. Uh, it didn't save my point. My uh, 
Yeah, let's do this. Give me one second. Give me one second. Almost there. Um, all right. So uh, you've got a couple of mountain ranges that we're going to have to watch. Blue Mountain, uh, which is up. Let's see. Let's fix this. I'm going to just do a little bit of a little bit of work on this. Just bear with me here. Studio line. Let's bring this up to here. Let's do this. So this is this is Blue Mountain right there. This is Pico Torquino right there in Cuba. Uh, and then you got, I gotta fix that. I got Blue Mountain there, I got two Pico Torquinos. Uh, but these are the mountain ranges that we're gonna be watching here. I gotta fix this here. Uh, these are the mountain ranges in Cuba uh, that we're gonna have to watch. Uh, these are the ones that I think that could have an impact uh, on our hurricane. Uh, let me just go ahead and clean this up here real quick. Uh, sorry about that there, folks. I uh, thought I saved that point, but apparently I did not. Uh, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show that to you again here. It's still, it's still a little bit off from where it needs to be, but Pico Turquino, then you've got the Blue Mountain there, and then you've got uh, uh, Pico Duarte up here and the Pico La Salle here. We're not going to hit those. We're, we could hit Jamaica if this thing goes west. Pico Turquina could still be in play, but the one that I the one that I want to look at is the one up here south and east of Havana. So that could be that could be a big deal uh, going forward. So that's one of the things we're going to be watching. Now here's a look at the latest tracks. Uh, again, we should be getting new model tracks here between 9 and 9:30. Uh, there's a clear path along the west coast of Florida. Bunch of grouping right in there, and then there's still a few stragglers on the eastern side. These are the main dynamical models uh, that we like to look at. And then I know uh, you guys are big fans of the tracks and the model guidance here. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of just play this along. So there's the first impasse right there. Um, there's the group of models right there. So a few of the models go over the first mountain range in southeast Cuba, and then the other ones uh, kind of go over the second one. So there are two mountain ranges there. Uh, that we're going to be dealing with um, as we get into Monday for Cuba. And that could have a significant impact on what we're dealing with as it comes up our way uh, Tuesday very early in the morning and then on into the afternoon. The, the speeds are all different. The majority of them are coming in Tuesday evening. Uh, the the H-Mon is, is zipping along, the red one right there, zipping along fairly quickly there. And then, uh, as you can see, as we go through... This is, let me stop that there for you real quick and kind of give you, so there's, there's Tuesday, right? And then we kind of come back. So there's, by Wednesday morning, except for the EGRI, the majority of the models are up in the Jacksonville and pulling away from Central Florida. So that, again, will be uh, some of the things that we watch. watching. Now, as far as the intensity models are concerned, again, these are gonna update uh, coming up tonight between 9 and 9.30, and I'll have them on the air at 10, and then the track, of course, the cone uh, at 11. Uh, Rebecca, nice. So there, there's the intensity forecast. It's the H-Mon is, uh, is the one that's Cat 3. That's the one that we're, uh, we're still going to have to watch. Again, everything is dependent upon what happens over those mountain ranges in Cuba and how far west this thing tracks. Now, this is another big thing, too. Uh, we've been talking about this the last couple of days. So there's your, there's your cone. The one thing that we're going to have to watch is this front. If it is a stronger front and comes farther to the south, it could recurve all of the models out to the north and east and away from central Florida. If it's weaker, then the storm's got more time to go west and then initially uh, begin to curve back towards the east. And you, you see that being reflected here on the ensemble models very well. You got some that go due west on the GFS and some that go right over the, the Florida Peninsula with very few east of Florida. That's the GFS scenario. Now you take a look at the Euros ensemble. The majority of them yesterday were east of central Florida. Now we've got east over and a little bit to the west. So the Euro is trending more towards the west like the GFS was doing, but it still has a hard turn to the right as we get you into Monday and Tuesday. So we're going to be watching that very carefully. So for me, uh, here's what we're watching, the forward speed, uh, possible land interaction with Cuba, 
We want it to stay fast. We want it to keep moving fast because that kind of hinders a development. And does ELSA get pulled north or west as the front arrives? So those are the, those are still the developing areas. The impacts again on preps. So based on what we're seeing, uh, you should be working on your final preparations by Monday evening. Uh, Tuesday or Wednesday, we're, we're in it. And Wednesday late, things are returning to normal, hopefully, as everything builds to the north. Again, everything is predicated on the models, the information we're getting right now, and it's highly subject uh, to change. And that's why we need you to keep checking back in. Now, this is a cool graphic. I'm a big fan of this one. Um, let's check it out. So this is the chance of tropical storm force winds. Now there's uh, 730 on Sunday. Let's stop it across the Keys. So by midnight or thereabouts on Sunday, there is a 5% chance for tropical storm force winds coming into play as the storm is trying to make landfall somewhere potentially in Cuba. Now, let's continue to go forward and bring that wind field into central Florida. There is Monday night, 11 o'clock, or very early Tuesday morning, uh, after midnight Tuesday, let's say, there's your, there's your tropical storm force winds. So 5% there, daybreak on Tuesday. Uh, how high does it climb? It goes to 10% uh, there on Tuesday, and then jumps up to about 30, or 20 to 30% there, especially on the west of I-4 zone there as we get you on into uh, Tuesday afternoon and, and on into Wednesday morning. So, uh, just food for thought. Uh, a lot of you love this, um, this dual thing we show with both the GFS and the Euro. There we go. So the Euro goes over the highest mountain range there in the Dominican Republic. GFS goes on the southern side, kind of hangs on, comes over Cuba, is now potentially not as strong. Remember, we had an eye on this last night, uh, but you can see the core west of Tampa and then pulling up into South Georgia. Uh, you take a look at the steering, the height falls in the graphic I like to show. There's your Azores slash Bermuda High. Uh, there's a look at that little area near Kingston uh, going over Cuba and then coming out feeling the effect of that front, potentially, and then lifting back to the north, northeast. So that is uh, uh, kind of one of the things we're looking at there. So the, an another way to show the GF is what are the actual winds during that same time stretch? Well, there's a lot of yellow. Yesterday, remember, we had red peak wind gusts at hurricane force. Tonight, we do not have that. So the GFS is weaker in with what it's been showing. So there you go. So a lot, a lot to digest there. All right, let's take some questions. Um, all right, Chuck, Causey, will this stop flights in and out of Orlando? Uh, I, f at this very moment, I, I don't want to speculate on that. I, I think uh, once we get into Sunday, um, I think we're going to have a much better uh, look at this thing. We'll have had a couple days of all of the hurricane hunters in there uh, doing uh, their thing and firming up these tracks for us. Uh, so I don't want to uh, point you one direction or the other. I'd like to see a, a couple more model runs. Uh, all right, have a full tank of fuel. Hey, Tony says, Jared, Eddie Rodas. No, no Cat 5, Eddie. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, again, if you're just getting in tonight, the winds are the same. It has sped up a little bit as of the 8 o'clock intermediate advisory. The pressure went up 4 millibars. Remember, usually when pressure goes up, the winds come down, and it takes a little time for that to be reflected. Uh, the other thing is that we have the hurricane hunters in there uh, right now, and they are zipping around doing their thing. Strongest winds they have found thus far uh, is uh, 63 miles an hour, and the surface pressure 995 to about 996. So there you go. All right. So the European has a storm going around. That is correct, Ken. That is, and so it's substantially weaker. But I've got to say this, the Euro does appear to be just a little bit more west of yesterday's run. Not by a lot. Uh, so that could be a trend. If that trend continues, then the Euro can miss the uh, uh, Dominican Republic or Haiti, and, and that could be a whole new ballgame. So we just want you guys to keep checking back in. And remember, if you're new to these feeds, I like to do them each night uh, right around 
uh, 8 o'clock, give or take uh, 20, 30 minutes to either side. So by following the page and liking the page, every time I go live, especially when we have events like this, you'll, you'll get a notification on your phone, uh, it provided you have your notifications turned on for Facebook that, that I'm going live to kind of give you guys the, uh, the latest uh, developing information. So we've got time to watch this. There's no need to panic, no need to freak out. Uh, it's, it's, we're in a waiting game, uh, but we want you guys to be prepared. We want to give you the very latest information. And uh, we want to put you in the know. And we're going to, what, what I believe we need to do is explain the scenarios, both good and bad, and take it day by day. You know, that's the best we can do. Uh, so if we get a track like that, we have a, a decent tropical storm. I'm going to go back to this graphic. Front right quadrant now is where we get the strongest winds and flooding and the chance for tornadoes. That's if we have something significant and that's uh you know right now that's still a uh, a big f um and so you know when i would back this up you know you're making your preparations maybe this weekend or or monday tuesday and wednesday if the cone is correct then uh, we're watching for flood wind any severe risk that delta could be bringing us by wednesday evening or afternoon uh, i think we're uh you know we're turning the corner and, and starting to improve mb DeAngelis, know that you're welcome looks like no matter that you direct you uh, Giselle, it, it depends. I mean, if it goes over the higher mountains, there's a chance it could be just a bunch of rain and nothing really significant. So we got to get, got to get past these mountain ranges. And once that happens, then I think uh, we'll be in much better shape to make any uh, definitive calls or or anything like that. Now, the one thing I haven't shown yet uh, is the is the uh, tropical storm advisories and the hurricane advisories. So you see Grand Cayman. You can see is in a is a, in a watch. We got warnings now for the Dominican Republic, the northeast side of Haiti. And we also have today, this is new from yesterday, hurricane watches up for central and southern Cuba and for uh, Jamaica and the southern reaches there of the Dominican Republic and Haiti. Hurricane watches uh, and warnings are now up. Kilo Ikai, you're welcome. Uh, Juan, you've put it, put, it, put it well. Just be prepared. It's all, all we can ask you to do. Uh, Gail, you're welcome. Natalie Ann, uh, shutter is always a good thing. If you've got them and you can use them, uh, you know, by all means, get that done. Now, again, I want to make one more point that even, even if the storm does turn, you look at what's going on and, and, and put yourself behind the one looking at this track. So you're looking, you're looking, you're looking this way right now. Notice that wind field. It's in the front right side. So if this cone continues on this path, the strongest winds are going to be on the eastern side. Kind of goes back to that graphic I was just showing you. Uh, there's a look at uh, San Juan. Uh, you can see Jamaica, Kingston right there. There's a beautiful view of, of our storm. Now, I want to show you sometimes. Ah, it's visible. Dang it. You can see at, sometimes at sunset. Let me, let me back this up. Sometimes that's, oh, that, see, that's pretty. Look at that right there. See those big, tall thunderheads right there? Kind of gives you a hint. Kind of gives you a hint that there's the center, and then you're starting to get some banding coming on in there. And then you got the outflow, kind of like what I call eyelashes uh, over the top. They actually show up better this way. This is kind of cool. Call these the, this is the outflow. You see the, a little fanning here, the little eyelash looking things like that. They're kind of way upstairs. Above low pressure is high pressure. It helps to bring the air up so that it can evacuate it and, and continue to develop. So that's what we've got going on right now. Uh, hey, Tony, thanks for, uh, uh, yep, uh, Wilde, you're welcome. Uh, again, lot, give, us, uh, give us some shares. Uh, the more people that we can reach by you guys sharing this uh, particular video, and giving it some emojis, the more people we can reach. And, and you know, look, that's what this is all about. Uh, we know that you can't watch uh, West 2 News 24-7, but, you know, you, you can have it at your disposal on your, on your cell phone, um, whether you're at a sporting event, whether you're having fun, you're at a bar, uh, whether, you know, you're, you're fishing. Just open up the phone, and there it is. So there's a look now. Uh, moving off towards the uh, west-northwest at 30 miles an hour. That is almost unheard of, folks. Uh, there's a look now at Elsa. And on that cone right there, this is interesting, didn't show this yet either. Uh, we are on the dirty side, that's correct. So there it is. There's Tuesday 
and then there's Wednesday morning. Again, rain kind of sticking around for a bit. When you take a look at the GFS rainfall forecast here, that's what you get through Wednesday evening. You can see the focus more to the west today uh, than it was yesterday. Yesterday we had four to six inches of rain across the, the peninsula. Now because it's weaker and farther to the west, the GFS numbers are uh, considerably lower. Uh, the European computer model just has a lot of uh, moisture coming in with the front to the north and those daily afternoon showers and storms. That's why it's got uh, one to three inches of rain. So I don't want you guys putting any water in your pool or watering your lawn. You don't need to do that. We're, we're going to have plenty of rain uh, between this storm and uh, whatever comes our way. Now, speaking of the weekend, I know it's a big holiday weekend. A lot of you guys are trying to figure out whether or not you're going to be able to backyard barbecue. I, I think you will. I still think with this front nearby, both Saturday and Sunday, uh, we are going to be dealing with the chance for uh, afternoon showers and storms. So I, do, I, don't, I don't want you to cancel any plans, but I do want you to know that you're going to have to keep an eye on the radar uh, just to make sure you can get that grilling in before those storms uh, start uh, coming in. Vivid Saunders, I did cut my lawn today, by the way. I'll have you know. So, yes. Robin Ford, you're welcome. Just happy to help you guys and, and uh, kind of uh, maybe reduce any stress you might have from uh, the anticipation. That, that's the worst part of these features is, is the anticipation. Uh, driving, uh, is driving down from Orlando money. Uh, Carmen, she is definitely going to need to keep an eye on this. There's no doubt about that. Merritt Island's in the house, Teresa. Chris, uh, Chris, it's it's crazy. I know we're we're there. I mean, it's just it's phenomenal. Uh, we are ahead of last year's pace. And remember, last year we had 30 named storms. So, Bonnie, Gary, good to have you in the house. Take care of your pets on the fourth. Always a good idea. Uh, they don't like the noise. It startles them. Uh, you're welcome, Ann. Uh, Ellen Delees, good to have you there. Can you show the rainfall around Fort Myers? Um, can I show the rainfall around Fort Myers? I don't know if I, let me see if I have that graphic. Hold on one second. Give me one second. I might have a Florida view. Okay, I'm still looking here for you. Hang tight. Okay, let's see if, that's not, oh, wait, here we go. There we go. Here's your right. This is the Baron. Yeah, and Barron model is only going out to Monday 8 a.m. and it's showing a pretty considerable amount of rain, especially off towards the uh, the west. Hang on, let me see, let me see what, what else I got in here. Okay, hold on one second. Let's see here. That's the two days, seven days. There we go. All right. All right, let me uh, let me fix this up here for you real quick. Hang tight. Give me somebody wanted the seven days, so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna make that happen for my friends. Here's the next seven days. Give me one. I'm gonna fix this live on the air, so just bear with me. It's gonna look weird for just a a smidge, um, but I want to try to get. Okay, so there it is. So we got. Uh, five. I've got three to five here. There's three to five, two to four. So let me fix this. Just about don't hang tight. If somebody wanted to see the state of Florida, it's a good call. Uh, here you go. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. I just saved the thing. Ah, that ticks me off. These points. Hang on. This is the problem. Delete. All right, let's do this. There we go. All right, hang tight. Sorry about that, gang. Uh, two to four is good. One to three is good. Two to three to five there. Okay, hang out. Let me save this. Now we've got it. All right, my bad. My bad. All right, let's see here. Pull it back up. Boom. There you go. So there's your there's your there's a look at your rainfall total. So Southwest Florida, all the way up towards the Panhandle. Good good question right there. Uh, sorry, Bellin. Uh, 1100. I'm not sure what that means, Mary. 1100. Uh, I think you're right. There we go. So yeah, that's a that's a seven-day forecast, and the majority of that rain is really going to fall 
within the next five days. Uh, Rock Ledge is in. Terry, thank you. Uh, there we go. Hey, Tony from the lands. Uh, Brian, you know, the GFS did get a fairly incredible uh, uplift uh, and, and uh, uh, an infusion of uh, some help. So we think the upgrade is, is definitely going to pay off this year. And hopefully we can do, be doing better than our friends over there in the Europe. European community, as they, they have a great model they run, and obviously Nicole Molina, good to have you there. A uh, new picture there, Nikki, looking good in yellow. JC Barber, more confident Saturday. Um, definitely the deeper, uh, Saturday is going to be more confident than today. Sunday is going to be more confident than Friday or Saturday. Uh, Eileen, Linda, uh, Crystal, Sh uh, Sh Shelgel, hope I said that right. Central Florida is not in the clear, absolutely not. Uh, so there you go. So that's a look at uh, uh, the 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 current thinking there uh, with with rainfall. Let's go back to the recon. They're flying in there. We're watching this very carefully. Uh, 69 mile an hour wind gust there with a surface peak at 48. So at 10,000 feet to wind 69, they extrapolated down to 48. They'll zigzag in there. Uh, the Amer we, we run the Americans, Yukon. It's, it's, it's here in the United States. Uh, See, Dominique uh, Evermond, good to have you there. Young lady, feel short. Coffee, strong coffee, yes. Bring it, baby, bring it. Uh, great group in here tonight. Thanks for sticking around. Again, the one thing we need to watch with this storm, if it's a tropical storm or worse, that front right quadrant from Tuesday, you know, depending on how large and long those squall bands are, you know, that front right quadrant is where we get the strongest winds and... Uh, the possibility of tornadoes. It's just one angle that we're going to be watching. We're not saying we're getting tornadoes. Uh, just a nice little friendly reminder. Uh, uh, Rita, most of Monday is fine. It's Tuesday that things start to go downhill if if this plays out the way it's being forecast. Uh, it could be. Stay tuned on that. Carla, good to have you. Jamie, under, Jamie, you, you saw that you guys are now under. Uh, Jamie's down in, in, uh, in Jamaica. Everybody say hi to uh, our friend down there in Jamaica. Um, so here we go. Uh, all of Kingston, all of Jamaica uh, is under a, uh, a hurricane warning now. And uh, Shipatoski's in the house. <laughs> Give me graphic ideas. Hey, you know, look, if I can help, I'm, I'm all for it. Tammy West. Uh, good to have you there, young lady. Can't you just in time busy watching physics? Ooh, all right. A little thermodynamics. I love that. Jerome Tyson. Jer Jerome, any, any issues down your way there uh, in Montego Bay the last couple of years? Uh, let's see here. Uh, he's watching us from, from Montego Bay. Beautiful area, by the way. Been there. Oh, Belize, Jamie. Uh, Jamie, I'm sorry, my bad. Jamie's in Belize. Uh, we got a lot of folks from the Caribbean checking in. We got Grenada. We've got uh, Kingston tonight. We've got Belize. Uh, Jamaica Sunday. Oh, there you go. Yeah, you'll be s teaching physics there, hopefully. Uh, Daytona look next week. So Tuesday and Wednesday, Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, are going to be the days to watch. Uh, Nina Marie, uh, you take a look at the cone. You take a look at the cone, and the answer to that is it stays a hurricane right through landfall on Monday. Now, tonight, the pressure's gone down. That could be a first key sign. That it may stay a cat one. We'll have to wait and see. These waters do get warm. In fact, that's one thing I haven't shown you all tonight. Uh, let's uh, pop in the, uh, there's the water vapor channel. I haven't shown this much tonight, but you can see uh, it's time for me to draw again, be the John Madden of weather. Uh, so bear with me here. So this is the reason why this puppy is screaming uh, to the west northwest. So once it gets about in here, it should start to slow down. Once it gets away from that high, it should start to slow down. So that's what's going on there. Uh, so this storm system is uh, is chugging along. There's no doubt about that. Uh, it's it's trying to trying to get even more powerful tonight. You can see that. Look at the deep thunderstorms now on the on the east side. Uh, there's a look at the water temperatures. That is some very warm water right there, Carla, Wendy, Vivid, Jerome. So there, there you go, Jerome. Excellent. Yeah, it'll 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 start picking up there for you, my friend, on uh, on Monday for sure. 
uh, all right, waves. Now, as the storm has grown, so have the waves. I'm going to do something here for a second. It may look a little bit goofy uh, on the screen, but it's going to actually allow for me to um, show you what the wave heights are. Check it out. 21-foot waves. And this is all headed towards the islands here. So it's crashing in. A surge on the south side is uh, is going to be a concern. So there, there you go. Let me fix this there for you. Well, that's a look at ongoing wave action. Now remember, um, if you look at the way the storm, you know the, the storm is is blowing the air, the waves this way, and as it continues to move this way, the surge will come in. The surge will come in. The surge will come in, and that's what we're going to have to watch going forward in time. Uh, someone was asking about the Sah Saharan air layer. Annette Figueroa Garcet, hi back. Hope you're doing well there, Annie. Holly, Sally Helmick, uh, that is some serious wave action. You're correct. So um, this storm is not being impacted whatsoever by the Saharan dust, uh, uh, Jerry, but it's a good question. Uh, it's just kind of, if anything, it's ripping a hole in that dust layer there. So that's, uh, again, uh, it's, it's too well organized at this point to... Uh, to be impacted by uh, Selena, Ricard, Stephanie uh, Davis. Uh, there's a look at the seven day. So on and off showers and storms just like today, right through the holiday on Monday. I know July 4th is Sunday, but we get most of us are celebrating it on Monday. Uh, sharing is caring. Selena, excellent. I love that you love my motto. Uh, Stephanie, hi. Linda, Tyrone. Yep. So Tuesday and Wednesday, we're tracking the tropics. The pressure, when the pressure drops, the winds go up, and it's usually a lower category. Tonight, Sue, though, the pressure has gone up from 991 to 995 so far. Uh, so that uh, could be uh, a sign that because it's moving so fast that it's, uh, as we mentioned, limiting uh, tropical development. So that's, uh, that could potentially be working in our favor. Uh, it's a good thing. Uh, let's see here. Did I... Let's see, I don't want that. Uh, so, uh, you know, the next 24 to 48 hours, we're watching the forward speed, watching that potential land action with Hispaniola and Cuba, and we're watching that cold front. So a lot of things yet to be ironed out here. So there you go. And knowing the carrier, it depends, Jerome. You can have warm waters, but if you have wind shear, then, then you know, that could could possibly not happen. That's a And that's a good thing. Helene Risch, Teresa Gerber-Ponder. Robin Ford, Sally Helmick. There we go. All right, gang, I got a, a couple of graphics that I'm trying to whip up for tonight, so I think we've covered it pretty well. Hopefully I've answered the majority of your questions. Even if I didn't get to answer it verbally, hopefully I answered it uh, to you when I was uh, kind of breaking down uh, all the uh, uh, the tropical graphics that uh, uh, that we, we typically show. Again, one last look at Elsa here for you. You can see moving very quickly to the west-northwest at 30. Winds are at 85. Pressure is now 995 millibars, up just a little bit from the 5 o'clock advisory. New miles coming in at about 930. I'll have them at the top of the show at 10, and then the very new cone uh, will be coming in at 11 o'clock, and uh, we'll, we'll continue to give you that information as we get it. All right, gang, enjoy your weekend. Uh, keep, uh, keep staying with Wesh. I am on standby to work Sunday night. As of now, I'm, I'm still technically off, but uh, all of us are on standby depending upon what happens with Elsa. So uh, take care. See you guys soon. And all I ask is you just keep checking in uh, with us, whether it's on Facebook, on online, on, on TV, uh, to get these updates. All right, guys, take care. Stay safe.